Well, hello. Welcome to Bull County. I'm Tyler Ray, County Extension Agent for Agriculture and Natural Resources. Bull County is nestled in the heart of Central Kentucky, about an hour south of Lexington. And most people, when they think of Bull County, they think of having two successful high school football programs, as well as it being rich in Kentucky history, with the Civil War battlefield in Paraville, as well as Danville being the city of first, having the first capital in Danville, and the first post office west of the Allegheny Mountains. But the agriculture landscape in Bull County is also about 60% forage based in either pasture or hay and a very significant presence in the beef cattle industry here in the county. But here we run about 35,000 head of cows and calves. Uh, and you can't drive down a county road without passing a cattle farm. Today we're on Brett Belty's farm here in Bull County and Brett has been a great asset to the Bull County agriculture community as he served on the Farm Bureau Board of Directors as well as a County Cattlemen Association Director and he's also served on the Bull County Extension Agriculture and Natural Resources Program Advisory Council. I like to explore new, new ideas and, and different ways. Mainly was trying to um, be able to run as, as land prices get higher. We fight urban sprawl, basically trying to, to be able to uh, run more cattle and, and keep more cattle on the property that we, we already own. Um, these particular set of uh, buildings of, uh, have are multi-use buildings, but mainly um, because we also do row crop farm, I try to have my grass cattle bought in the fall when prices are a little cheaper and ready to to turn out as grass time gets here before before that workload starts. The confinement barns we have here are are all hoop barns that that we had uh, put up. We did a lot of the fabrication of the cattle facilities as in the guardrails, feed bunks, um, hay racks, that kind of thing. We did a lot of the water systems ourselves. They are, but other than that, they're basically a standard hoop barn that we've converted to into a cattle confinement. Same structure, same barn, same everything. Uh, we did do most of these on round post. Uh, and we've added the guardrail and a few modifications to to have them for for cattle. I feel that we get really good ventilation. I mean, uh, there's no way to measure that, or but I've never, you know, there there is troubles that that have learned everything every every day every year is a learning lesson. But I've never thought that ventilation has been a problem. They seem to have good airflow all the way through them. We've got actually some pointed in different directions, but I've never I've never seen a, a big difference in even which way they're facing. On this farm currently, there, there's two uh, 32 by 150s and then one uh, 32 by 125. The, and uh, at the home farm, I have a couple 32 by 96s. There's same design, same setup. I really, if I had to do it over again, I would go at least 125 because it gives, if you're kind of dealing in pot loads of cattle, um, the 96 footers is just a little bit small for a, a full pot load uh, once they get up, up to a bigger size. Normally if around probably 50 to 60 square foot per animal uh, in a 32 by 150 on lightweight calves, we're somewhere in that 85 to 100 head range. Bunks just down one side, so uh, on a 100 head, you know, you're looking at 18 inches. Basically using these as a place to uh, condition and, and, and keep calves in the winter time and basically without having tearing up pastures and, and sacrificing ground, I'm able to feed them, uh, I'm not going to say cheaper, but more efficiently here in the barns than I am spread out all over the pasture trying to save that ground for when grass time comes. Uh, so normal feeding program here especially on the calves that, we, that, that are in the barns now which would be just calves that all I'm doing is basically trying to uh, keep condition and health on to get to grass so they're basically right now eating just some decent quality grass hay and they're getting 
roughly 1% of body weight and I am feeding basically just now a pellet and, and, and whole corn. Um, the corn, I buy the pellets and, and, and obviously we have the corn so I'm mixing those in a feed bin and, and feeding roughly 1% of body weight. We'll probably turn out uh, and go to some stockpile grass 1st of March, uh, 10th to 15th of March, something like that. I'll revaccinate, reimplant, worm, and, and turn those cattle out to grass, and then we'll pull them. They should be, most of them coming in now is four and five weights, and we'll go to grass as six weights, and pull them in the summer is eight and nine weights. Uh, usually try to have the last of them sold by the time we start harvest in September. Mostly corn stalks. I will use a few uh, wheat straw bales in the summertime, uh, but mainly corn stalks. And then we try to recycle any waste hay off the feeders, off the hay racks, and we're we're turning that into the bedding. And by the time it goes through as bedding, it's it's ready to be spread back on the crop ground. Normally, twice a year, we're cleaning out in front of the corn planters in the springtime and. After the combine in the fall, um, sometimes if they get used a lot, we may have to do a little bit of uh, maintenance along the feed bunks and, and pile it up, but for the most part, cleaning completely out twice a year. The first two original barns are on, on uh, Richie uh, fountain waters with uh, electric plugs, and we have not had any, any trouble. Uh, I'll, I like those. Uh, the light, later barns we have done, we've actually put the heavy use equipment tire tanks in and they're, they're hard to go wrong with. Uh, we've not had any problem there. Uh, even during the last year, during the cold, we were able to keep them going. Um, I found that they, it surprised you how, just being inside, how how much they will keep a hole open with cattle drinking on them. So they're nice in there because you don't have to worry about them as much when you're cleaning out if they get bumped with a skid loader. Uh, it's it's not not the end of the world. Um, it it allowed the, the positives to me is it allows me to purchase cattle in the fall when I have more labor time. Um, I'm able to and normally um, with market trends, able to buy calves a little bit cheaper in the fall. Um, I'm able to precondition those and, and, and have some uh, aging and uh, uh, health straightened out and, and ready to go to grass. We found that we're able to, we're able to get a lot of benefit out of our manure because we're, we've got good quality manure that we're returning back back to those same fields where we bailed the stalks off and where I see advantages there from the cropping side. I can efficiently, I can one man and basically one tractor and, and a feed box on the truck, I can, can feed those in a timely manner every day. Like there's three barns here, you know, roughly will be close to 300 head at when, and when they're full. If we're not treating, if we don't have to treat anything, just a normal day, I can usually feed in less than an hour by myself. Uh, that would be be uh, feeding grain, you know, putting a little hay in each barn, uh, walking through, checking waters, and just checking health. Typically, one day a week would require a couple hours uh, to kind of put in some bedding, clean up a little bit, whatever that might be. One first first thing that comes to mind is is even though if you don't think about it, always plan for expansion. Um, study, study where you're gonna put it at, where plan for the future. I mean, it's not sometimes the first thing that, that comes to mind, but if it's kind of like here, we started with these two, and then I always had this spot over here in the back of my mind for the third barn. Um, that's one thing to consider. I guess kind of have a, a an idea of what you're really wanting to do with cattle. I mean, a lot of barns, these were built very cost efficiently compared to a lot of other things and, and maybe not set up exactly for guys that are really trying to, to put a lot of weight on the cattle or trying to do something different, but kind of have in mind how you want to feed, what you want to feed, and what type of cattle that you are going to have in the facility and 
there's changes that can be made. I've just found that over the years that I have a better luck with the ball and calves, the real high risk, they're still, I still feel like that I, that I can start them outside on pasture easier than I can on the inside. Um, just too many respiratory diseases. It just, they seem like I have better luck starting them outside and then bringing them inside if, if that is choice. But if I'm gonna keep cattle confined 100% uh, of the time, new ones, I would rather buy a wean calf that it has some kind of vaccination history and they can, they learn to to get to the to the feed bunk within a day or two and, and normally don't have a whole lot of trouble. I mean, we're here very close to, to the distillery. Um, that was our first, and that's how we designed these straws to, to hold stillage if we wanted to. It, obviously, I mean, we had great gains and everything. My biggest problem was is we could not keep, we could not keep the barns dry. We tried everything, but it was just taking massive amounts of bedding and, and to, to keep the barns dry enough to, to feed that much wet stillage or slop. And we, we tried several different different ways and I never could come up with a good solution without burning through a, a, a massive amount of bedding and having to clean the barns and it got to be a, a very time consuming job.